Behind every politician these days, there's an image consultant, except Prescott, behind whom there's a line of traffic following a chauffeur-driven Jaguar. <laughs> but uh, every great figure needs an advisor, a mentor, a guru. Hitler had Goebbels, Thatcher had Hitler. Basil, <laughs> Basil Brush had Mr. Derrick. But just how old is the noble art of spin-doctoring? <laughs> Not so bloody tight, you great wazzock. How can I fight the faggot French with bollocks packed like meatballs in a tin? This is the... Tell you what, give us a squirt of the old cod liver oil around the neck as that helps to keep the old orbs and scepters a bit mobile. Morning. Hello. Don't you knock. It's a tent. It's a little point in an action that would only result in the merest trembling of the royal canvas. Who the crap are you? Lord Mandelson, at your service. And what in the name of arse do you want? Sire, the French are mounting their horses. Doesn't surprise me, the frogs will pork in at They mean to attack, sir. All oh, right, well, tell the lads I'll be out in two shakes of a wallaby's dong. About your speech, my liege. There's nothing wrong with the way I talk. I can swear as much as I like, I'm the king. No, your speech to the troops, my liege. What speech? The one I sent you. Did you not receive it? Oh, 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 that. Yes, I, I think I have had the pleasure. And is there a problem? Only one. It's utter pants. I can't stand before the men and talk this load of poncy twaddle. I mean, look at this bit. By Jove. I can't say by Jove. The lads will think I'm a raving portillo. <laughs> and this. Gentlemen of England now a bed. A bed? If you're referring to those lazy shites who stayed at home, why don't you say so? I want them desperate to skewer a Frenchie, not looking puzzled and flicking through the dictionary. Yes, my liege, if you examine the results of the focus group surveys conducted within the main demographic areas of your armed forces, you'll see that this sort of approach does elicit by far the best response from the key A, B and C groups. A, B and C? Archers, bowmen and cannon fodder. <laughs> and as I'm sure your majesty is aware, by using terms that the common herd are unfamiliar with, they naturally assume you to be their superior and therefore to know about that of which you speak, irrespective of how facile, vacuous or delusional per se the empirical content of your actual oration may be. You're a bit of a slimy bastard, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, your speech, how does it begin? Uh. Once more under the breach, dear friends. Once more. Oh, all right. Once more under the breach, dear friends. Once more. I've already said it twice. How many more times? No. Once more under the breach, dear friends. Once more under the breach, dear friends. Once more. What? Once more under the breach, dear friends. Once more. Yes. Under the breach, dear friends. No. You're not very good at this, are you? Where's the tosser I usually have, Big Willie? Uh, Mr. Shakespeare. Yes. Uh, there may be a slight problem. Something to do with an undisclosed loan to buy a cottage in Stratford. Yes. When did that get out? Uh, next Tuesday. I didn't quite find the details. Well, I'd better leave you to uh, learn the words of your speech. No, I'm sorry. I can't say any of this crock of dung. I'm just going to get out there and tell the lads to get stuck in. The only good Frenchie's a dead one. It's a little anti-European. Of course it's anti-European, you big Jesse. It's the Battle of Agincourt. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Hold a bloody referendum? Yes, sir. Right, then. You get your scrawny, tatty bum in gear and write me a speech that's, that's anti-French, that's a good patriotic rant that makes me sound like the kind of kick-ass king who's going to show them where to shove their baguettes. Or else. Or else what? Or else I'll pack you off to Belfast to sort out the Irish. Shit. <laughs>